In this lecture, we're going to cover the four factors of timer programming. If you get this straight in your mind, you should be able to walk up to any timer that you see out in the field, and as long as you cover these four factors, you'll be walking away with a program that's actually going to work. Now, digital timers, they lend themselves to certain mistakes in the programming, and that's one of the reasons that I teach this in a four-step process, and if you do each of these in its intended order, you're going to come out with the intended result. Now, the very first thing that you need to look at is the current date and time in the timer. So every time I walk up to a timer, that's the very first thing that I look at. Even if I was there on that property last week, there may be something have happened, maybe a nearby lightning strike or the power shutting on and off may have altered the programming in it. It may have altered the time and the date that the timer thinks it is. And if you don't have this first factor straight, then nothing else that you do with the timer is going to work out the way you want. The second factor that you're going to look at is the program start time. Now we're going to discuss this a little more in depth here in just a minute as far as exactly what a program is, but on almost every timer, this doesn't mean the start time of each individual zone. On almost every timer that you're going to encounter, they all consider all of the zones and one cycle all the way through the property as a single program, so that means you need one start time to trigger this entire cycle all the way through the system. Now, we're going to show you a Rainbird timer that was developed for homeowners um, that actually does a little bit differently to where you have to actually program the start time for each individual zone in it, but that's the exception rather than the rule, and that's usually where most people screw up on programming a timer is this one simple deal. Normally, if you have one program, you only need one program start time. And also, as you go through a timer, always make sure that there's not additional start times in there unless they're needed, and we're going to discuss the reasons why we might need multiple programs in just a minute. The third factor that we're going to consider is each individual zone's runtime. So each zone that you have on a system may be in a different microclimate. It may consist of different types of sprinkler heads. One zone may have turf rotors. Another zone have pop-up sprays for flowers. And another zone yet may be drip irrigation. And all these have different requirements for their precipitation rates as far as how long that you want to run each individual zone. So the timer gives you the opportunity to tell it each individual run time for each zone that we have operating on this system. Now the fourth and final factor is going to be the days that we want the system to run. Now there's two ways that most timers go about this. You can either program in the specific days and it's not the most optimum way of running, but we generally try to set customers up on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule just for the accountability version of it. But there's a better way of doing it if you can keep up with it, and that's the interval watering. Now, most turf grasses and ornamental plants like a very structured wet and dry cycle. So if we want to give uh, an exact measurement of you know, a watering on one day, and then two days of dry time, and then a watering, and then two days of dry time. We have to use the interval version of this, and usually the interval comes in just a single number, one, two, three, or four, and if it's on a one, an interval of one means it's going to run every day. An interval of two means it's going to run every other day, an interval of three, every third day, and so forth. But for most people, we like to set them up on an individually specified day, and usually that's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now that doesn't give uh, an even wet dry cycle across the entire week. You know, we've got seven days, an odd number of days in a week. So we really want to set this up what's best for the customer, what's best for the property, but I've found as a contractor with thousands of customers, a lot of times I was getting calls from people that may sleep in late, 
um, or you know work third shift or second shift and they don't see the the system run or they don't see the ground wet just after the system is run so they're questioning what days the timer's supposed to come on if it's on interval they don't know if it's a monday tuesday or wednesday or whenever it's supposed to come on so as a contractor you could be getting callbacks from that and that's one of the reasons why we set our customers up on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, it gives a, um, a day schedule that the customer can have in their mind and they know what day that that's supposed to run. And so if they come out and look and see a little patch of ground that's normally wet when the system runs, they'll know that it's happened versus always wondering if it ran or if it didn't. And then sometimes if the system isn't running, if they don't know what days it's supposed to run, Maybe it can go two or three weeks before they actually realize that the system isn't operational. So you've got some options available to you here, but if you stay with this system of one, two, three, and four, and you set all your timers up on this scheme, and also when you walk up to a timer, you know to quickly check these four factors, it'll keep you from making a lot of mistakes and it'll keep your properties online and doing exactly what you want for them to do. Now, a program is a whole set of instructions that tells your timer what to properly do. Now, a program consists of factors two, three, and four, the program start time, each zone's run time, and the days that it's supposed to water. So we have those three factors that are in every program. Now, if we have, let's say, a residential system that has turf grass and just some normal ornamental bushes or plants around the house and these don't have any extraordinary water requirements we'll probably want all of those to run on the same program and as I mentioned before you know with my companies we generally set our um, clients up on a Monday Wednesday Friday schedule so that program if all we have is the same watering needs for each of our zones those probably can be set up on a single program and usually that's indicated on most timers as letters a, B, and C. And this is something that can really throw people off. And sometimes when we look at timers, there'll be start times, both in programs A, B, and C, even though they don't need it, they only have a few zones of turf or bushes that they're irrigating. So let's talk a little bit about why we would want multiple programs. Okay, so let's take a, a typical residential system here, and let's say it's got five zones of turf and ornamental bushes and so forth, then we would all want to run those on the same day in a single program like we see here in this grid. But what if one of those zones was a planting bed that has annuals in it? Now typically annuals have a, a shorter, less deep root system and they need a little bit of water every day to keep them alive because they as annuals, they just don't have the time to develop an extensive root system and benefit from that wet, dry cycle. So if you have a lot of small annuals in a, a bed that might be at a subdivision entrance or at the front of your property, you might want to give it a little bit of water every day. And so, you know, in our area, sometimes about five minutes a day works out great for these little annual beds. So what we would want to do is set this up on two different programs. The majority of our system that's only watering turf and bushes, which doesn't have that everyday watering requirement, we would place that on program A and have a setup for it. And let's say those would all start running at 5 o'clock. But the other zone, our zone of annuals and a flower bed, we may want to run that every day just for five minutes. So we may set the start time up for 445 so that it'll come on before the rest of the zones come on and do their thing and then we will set up the day schedule for every day and of course we would set up the zones run time for that particular zone for five minutes or whatever it is that we require so as you see from this grid here we can have a different program that handles just that one zone and then we can split it up and the rest of our zones be running Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and our zone of annuals running every single day.